Hi. Well, another Internet of Things company has bit the dust. Um, are we the least bit surprised? No, it happens with monotonous regularity. All these, you know, smart homes, smart appliance uh, companies. Yeah, another one's shut down, just leaving everyone in the lurch. But it's kind of like the way they did it in this particular case. Anyway, a company called uh, Insteon, I'd kind of sort of heard of them. I don't They've actually been going for quite some time. They sell, their website is still here, Insteon, superior smart lighting and electrical uh, control. You know, they have like a, um, I guess it joins with Alexa and Google Assistant or whatever, wank wank. So you can turn your lights off and on. Why anyone wants to do this, I don't know. But yeah, anyway, they got all these um, smart, uh, you know, home hub devices and stuff like that. Some of them are very useful. They've got like uh, security sensors and remote, uh, you know, light switches and, you know, stuff like that. It's okay if you want to, like, I don't understand the whole Internet of Things thing for just using your shoe phone to, like, control the lights above you. Just, like, go over to the wall and switch it off and on. It's just dumb. Um, but, you know, there is some value in remote operating, um, you know, things. And I actually have a uh, Z-Wave um, system to do this. Anyway, it's been featured absolutely everywhere. So they've got, yeah, this uh, hub device, which I guess connects into the interwebs and everything else. And, you know, you can get, like, smart wall outlets and all sorts of stuff, thermostats and, you know, remote controls and things like this and all sorts of stuff, right? So it uses um, their own proprietary uh, 955 meg, I think it is. But um, yeah, anyway, apparently the news is not that they've just gone bust, but they just vanished. Poof, gone, magic. Um, and the magic smoke has escaped from an Internet of Things company. And uh, they're just, not only have they, uh, well, the website's still there, but apparently the app and servers are dead and the CEO scrubbed his LinkedIn page. No one is responding. And sure enough, like, um, there's an excellent article which I'll link from Ars Technica down below. I love, um, you know, these uh, Ron Medio, excellent um, uh, work by, you know, putting in links to everything and um, summarizing this thing. It's also over on uh, Reddit as well. Uh, they're all talking about it over there because they've shut down the uh, community forum on the website. It's it's just gone ski. Like, just, like, apparently there was no hint of this. It's just gone. Um, yeah, so they use their own proprietary 900 uh, megahertz wireless protocol, which is, you know, different to the, um, yeah, the uh, Z-Wave and Zigbee and, uh, you know, other ones like that. But anyway, there's another article from Stacey uh, Higginbotham um, has pointed out that um, high-ranking Insteon executives, including the CEO, Rob Lilliness have scrubbed the company from their LinkedIn accounts. In the time it took to write this article, Lilliness has also removed his name and picture from his LinkedIn profile. So, yeah, they don't want to be associated with this <laughs> this company that just went bust. Um, so they're gone ski. I'll link in this um article down below as well. Just poof. Gone. I see, I don't know if they use their own services, whether they used um you know the Amazon um you know servers or whatever um for all of this. So they do have a uh, parent company called Smart Labs Labs Inc. Um and they share the same executives. So I don't know. You can hassle them over there, I guess. Um and they license the uh, Nokia name, Nokia Smart Lighting. Um it's just to be rebranded um version of the Insteon equipment. So there you go. Um, they're, they're paying to use the Nokia name. Um, and yeah, they were uh, acquired back in uh, 2017, private investment um, firm, and founded by here, yeah, like the guy who's just scrubbed it from. He's completely scrubbed it. He's in a private investment firm, and he just completely scrubbed it from his LinkedIn profile. And if we go over to the LinkedIn here, we can uh, search this. Um, Insteon. Here we go. Yeah. Nah. It's gone. Um, so yeah, he's absolutely gone ski. So there you go. Um, yeah, why would you scrub it? Like, this is ridiculous. And this is what they say in the um, Ars Technica article here. And this, this gets to the uh, point of it. A company shutdown, especially a smart home company shutdown, which everyone, you have to invest in these systems, right? You've got to buy the devices and then, you know, all the different invite, you've got to choose the system that you want to use and then you've got to invest everything in that. So not only have they bought the hub, they've bought all the devices to control their smart home and stuff like that. And you're reliant upon 
that company actually running those servers unless maybe they run it independently on like the Amazon servers or, you know, some other, you know, um, mainstream provider. I don't know how this one works. So anyway, they say a company shut down, especially a smart home company shut down is never easy. Many customers invested hundreds of dollars in this formerly multi-million dollar ecosystem, suddenly closing up shop like a bunch of fly-by-night grifters would be an unacceptable way to treat paying customers. Yeah, I don't know. Is this like a... A you pay a subscription thing to keep your lights on? I, I don't know. Anyway, hopefully more communication will be forthcoming. And I totally agree with this. The company could have given everyone a month's notice it was going out of business, could have open sourced the code so that, you know, people can take it and then maybe run it on, you know, Amazon or something. You know, all the all the Redditors, all the users can get together on Reddit and somebody, you know, there'd almost certainly be someone there with the technical chops and the willingness to, you know, keep the thing running somehow. Yeah, I, I agree. Just open source the thing, you know, the API or whatever you need to do to get it um, or post a documentation to help users get running on some other system. Uh, could have given forum members a chance to get organized on some other site. Yeah, maybe they could have like transferred it over or somehow. Maybe people could, you know, write some code to make it operate with another um, system or something. I don't know. But that didn't happen. Instead, Insteon committed to the cardinal sin of smart home companies leaving customers and their gear in the lurch. Excellent. There's Ron. Uh, good article, Ron. So I'll link that in. There you go. Um, they've The com company's completely come a gutsa and they've just taken their bat and ball and they've gone home. And I uh, like this is just this is just ridiculous. And it, but this happens all the time with these Internet of Things companies. But, you know, sure, companies go out of business. That's fine. Everyone understands that. But at least give people a heads up. Look, sorry, we're going to have to shut down. You know, just like keep it all running for a month or something like that. And their system status over here, it says all services are online. There are currently no known issues affecting Insteon services. You think? <laughs> their CEO has scrubbed it and the forums vanished. Um, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, planned, server, uh, planned service outage with planned maintenance with server outage. So it could be permanent. So it seems like its servers are actually down though, even though they say they're up. The Insteon app appears worthless and users' automations and schedules have stopped working. Many of Insteon's wall switches are actual electrical switches, so the worst uh, that will ever happen is they become dumb switches. Oh, yeah, good. At least they might have an override. Um, even without the Insteon servers and apps, Insteon's protocol has been reverse engineered for a while now. Nice. Okay, so it's possible to control the devices locally without the app. It's also possible to pipe that local control into another platform's hub controller returning the smarts. Well, I hope that happens. Um, and apparently it seems like like OpenHab um, is another open source option and it's got Insteon support. So, uh, and a Homebridge plugin can get Insteon working on Apple's HomeKit. Okay, so it looks like customers may not be out in the lurch, which they could have been if people hadn't like already reverse engineered this and add, like added support in OpenHab and, you know, other things. Um, so, yeah, they might... <laughs> hopefully um, the users get out of this unscathed. If anyone has any idea how many like users they've got, how many of these things are uh, sold, they've been going a long time, actually. The company's like way back, well, Insteon, <laughs> back in 2001. But I don't know, yeah, they've actually been going uh, for quite some time here. So if anyone um, knows how many like users they've got, how many devices they're sold, please leave it in the comments down below. But yeah, hopefully um, there's some place... For them to go but that is the risk with all these um internet of things things i've got quite a few things i've used over the years that have just stopped working because well they can't connect to like the private uh service that was actually uh running so you know it's better if you potentially say run them on amazon which is going to be hopefully around you know uh, longer um but you know still in 20 years it's your are your lights still going to work at you know Almost certainly not if you've got an Internet of Things thing these days. Um, so, yeah, it's just nuts. So, anyway, have you got one of these um, Insteon um, Internet of Things things? Let us know in the comments down below. But, yeah, that's just, that, that's just wrong. Like, they should have just said, look, we're shutting down. Be honest. Where, where's the harm in this? I don't know. This just ruins your reputation. As if you think you can just like magically hide, scrub it from your LinkedIn and just hide. I mean, it, it, it provokes articles like this. If they, they did the shutdown, it wouldn't have made Ars Technica, it wouldn't have made the EEV blog. Um, second channel. Yeah. Um, 
<laughs> and it, you know, it, we wouldn't have had, well, you would have had some fuss, but look, here's a thing, you know, they could have told everyone, look, these, this OpenHab thing, you know, look, please go over to OpenHab, it has support, maybe, you know, help people out, use your, you know, okay, we've got, you know, a couple of weeks worth of, you know, salary left before all the money runs out, let's, you know, they knew this was coming for some time, they could have um, done the sensible thing and had some engineers there just working on, uh, you know, actually transitioning this over, knowing that the company is going to go bust. The least you can do uh, for the customers is to transition them over to another system. This Open Hab, I, I don't haven't used Open Hab, but it sounds open. And um, yeah, Amazon Echo control. Oh, it's got it's got tons of stuff. But I assume it's like open source or something. Yep. So yeah, cool. Like they could have just transitioned everyone over to that. I'm sure it wouldn't have been a huge amount of work. Sounds like it already supports them and just, you know, have a guide for people to move over. And then once you've done all that, go, yeah, sorry, guys. You know, the company wasn't, you know, can't financially do it anymore. So we're gone ski, but, you know, here you go. Um, rather than just leaving everyone in the lurch. That just sucks ass. So anyway, leave your thoughts and comments about this down below. And have you been caught out by an internet of things or one of these like online uh, services that you invested in and it's just completely gone now um just vanished so yeah anyway thoughts and comments down below catch you next time